Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am delighted to welcome you to our webinar regarding fire safety solutions for hotels. Before we begin, I would like to go over a few webinar considerations. So we would like to inform everyone that this webinar is being recorded. Afterwards, we will make the recording available in our platform. The microphone of attendees is muted to ensure good audio quality and minimize background noise. If you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them in the Q&A section of WebEx. We will have a Q&A session after the end of the presentation where we will address as many questions as possible. Our presenter for today is Mr. Florin Bukur. He is the Application Design Manager at Bosch Security and Safety Systems in Germany, and he is also the Project Lead for Vertical Focus. So without further ado, please let me hand the presentation to Florin. Thank you, Divina. Um, warm welcome from my side as well. Good afternoon to everybody. It's my pleasure to present you today for the next hour or so, the topic of file safety in hotels. So um, let's jump straight into the topic and we will start with some uh, overview about safety in hotel or uh, logic vertical, how we call it. So we all know the risks that are coming with such applications like hotels. Um, we have, a, let's say, high, high density of um, guests in a rather small or confined space. So with this comes, a, let's say, a quite a high risk to endanger um, these lives and of course the property itself in case of fire. So according to, to a study in 2022, about 10,000, more than 10,000 fires were taking place in hotels worldwide, which resulted directly in um, about 250 civilian deaths, uh, 3.5 thousand um, people injured and property damage um, around $1.5 billion, which is huge if we, if we consider it, but of course, um, uh, this is the reality. The leading ca causes to, to these fires, according to, to uh, the same study, were cooking equipment in the kitchens, electrical appliances, and smoking. Um, so, considering this, this is a starting point, um, we realized from the start that we need a very reliable and fast fire detection system. So, when we did the focus on this vertical um, exercise, we started by asking our partners and um, customers what are the most important aspects for them. And from that, we extracted the four key goals for the safety managers in hotels. And those are, um, first of all, of course, ensure the safety of the guests, staff, and uh, the property itself. After that, it comes avoid this, uh, the disruption for the guests. Nobody wants to have, for example, an evacuation for the hotel uh, if this is uh, unnecessary caused by a false alarm. Of course, minimizing risks and all the measures that are coming to this. And finally, very important, complying to policies. Be those policies, let's say, um, yeah, international norms, uh, local norms, or um, yeah, even, even private uh, companies norm like the big chains of hotels. So keeping those in mind, we went further and asked our customers who already worked with Bosch, what are the advantages of using Bosch in such a project? And we collected all these key um, advantages according to our customers. Um, just to mention uh, a few, we have the possibility to integrate with most building management on the market or video management systems. Uh, of course, starting with, with Bosch BIS and continue with third party um, systems. We have um, um, comprehensive support for the end user to um, write the tender and for specifiers, of course. We have a user friendly panel um, with the possibility to do the walk test or maintenance in, in um, uh, silence mode for the sounders, for example, to avoid um, disturbances to the guests. 
We have a, a, a big spectrum of detectors, um, easy to adapt to any needs of the system. And um, not only that, but you have a broad portfolio to choose from, just from one provider. Of course, we have a proven quality, um, well established in the market, a reliable system that it's also proven in, in the many projects we um, are operating still. And um, we have an easy de to design system and, and commission. Um, finally, of course, um, we can design any type of systems with our products um, in a scalable way going from a small number of, um, for example, one panel with your detector scaling to um, networked panels with uh, thousands of detector in the project. And we we'll also provide a lot of integration possibilities via, for example, interfaces models to have the flexibility we need in the project. So um, this is the opinion of our customers uh, about our fire system, but now let's come back to our use case, to the hotel projects, and let's have a deeper look into what kind of, um, what are the particularities, let's say, for this type of projects. And we collected here uh, some use cases, some particularities, and we start, um, for example, with the type of areas we need to protect. We have, for example, standard areas like reception, administrative areas, office spaces. We have um, not so standard or let's say sensitive areas like the rooms themselves for the, for the guests, um, uh, spa or pool areas, kitchens, a very sensitive topic always, um, service areas, technical rooms and parking, of course. Then we have um, requirements about the aesthetics of the system. Uh, we know usually hotels um, are having, let's say, very specific needs the, requiring the design, um, maybe like uh, atriums, entrance halls, uh, or the restaurant itself, or, or the bar area. They all uh, look into having, let's say, a special design or unique design. What's um, furthermore, what's important for, for this type of projects, we need um, a seamless or easy integration with the evacuation system, the public address and evacuation system. And uh, for that, we need to, to have the possibility to, to do the evacuation in steps or gradually. And uh, of course, uh, to integrate as easy as possible with, with this type of systems. We need to minimize the impact that the remote, that, that the maintenance works are having uh, towards the personnel and the guests, of course. And finally, we need to have a flexible system um, to yeah, provide, provide the possibility for further, uh, further expansion of the system, um, growth with the, let's say, site, for example. So, Having all this in mind, let, let's take them one by one and discuss a little bit what is the challenge and what is our solution for this. And the start, of course, with the easiest, which is the office and administrative areas. Um, and here, of course, the challenge is that we have um, rather high uh, file loads due to uh, all the, let's say, paper, flammable materials, textiles, electrical equipment, and, and so on. And of course, our solution, it's a very solid backbone system composed with the Avenar panels, addressable panels, and our Avenar 4000 detectors. So this is the, um, let's say, backbone of the system, a very solid and reliable system uh, that we going to see in the next slides we can add on. Um, it comes with a, let's say, very high degree of compatibility backwards and forwards. So basically we can um, have, a, we can maximize the investment with, with this type of product uh, to maximize the, the lifespan of the, of the system and also um, make maintenance, replacement upgrades as easy as possible. Another, very important aspect for us is to have a very high robust system with a minimum possible uh, false alarm rate. 
Right, next we look at, uh, let's say, more sensitive um, areas. And for this, we uh, have our dual um, ray or and multi-sensor with dual ray um, um, sensor series and detector series. And for that, um, it's a very good match for this kind of sensitive areas like guest room, uh, where, for example, steam or smoking can cause call, call false alarms, spa areas for the, again, for the humid environment, kitchen for the um, steam smoke, and um, other areas like clinical room service areas. So all these type of sensitive areas usually need a very reliable detection system. And for that, our multi-sensor um, that comes with not one or two, but three methods of um, filtering the false alarms. The first one being the dual optical um, technology that we use two wavelengths of, um, of light in, um, in the optical chamber to filter by the particle, uh, which is the alarm source. And of course, we do have, um, besides that, the normal ISP intelligence signal processing inside the detectors, the algorithms itself, and also measuring the EM um, let's say impact the electromagnetic disturbance values in the detectors. So all these packed together in all our um, Avenar 4000 detectors. And because of that, um, uh, combined with the fact that we can add multiple sensors inside a detector, like for example, heat or CO sensor, basically we can have a very high flexibility with Keep, keeping the robustness of the detection. And that makes um, these multi-criteria detectors um, um, or multi-sensor detectors very suitable for these sensitive areas. Next on, um, uh, a little bit about the parking areas. Here we have the challenge of having um, smoke traces or other particles that can generate smoke alarms. And for that, we have um, heat-only detectors, for example, that we can use very successfully. Of course, the, uh, let's say, main um, option here would still be to have water sprinklers installed, but if this is not the case then, uh, or even if it is a case, the heat detectors can complement um, this type of systems. Uh, note here that parking areas are really, really highly dependent on the local regulations that fluctuate um, a lot depending on the geographical area we're talking about. So they are very different if we're talking um, Asia or, uh, or Europe, even in Asia, I imagine they are very different, for example, from uh, India to Singapore or um, so on. So keeping that in mind, uh, this is just, let's say, the frame we are talking about. Now a little bit on the aesthetical requirements, and we were talking about, uh, for example, atrium spaces, high ceiling spaces, restaurants, bars, they have very specific requirements um, uh, driven by the architects and the um, design of, of the room. So for that, our solution is to provide um, the 520 series detectors, which we call the invisible detectors. They are ultra slim uh, with, with uh, um, flash mount uh, possibilities. So basically at the surface of the wall, there's uh, no uh, physical optical chamber. We use a virtual optical chamber for that. So all the detection happens like roughly five centimeters away from the, from the um, let's say surface of the detector. And this makes it, uh, let's say, very fitting for this type of areas where we don't want uh, an intrusive um, design. So basically, um, that provides you with a, with a, let's say, timeless design. There's nothing uh, there that, uh, let's say, um, after a while, we say that uh, it's very visible or disturbing to the eye. Also, it comes with a, with a um, choice of 16 colors that can be personalized. So um, that, that also helps to, let's say, blend into, into the um, design of the area. And just uh, maybe not important uh, necessarily here, but uh, one remark is that's also very easy to maintain detector because having no uh, physical optical chamber, it just needs to be wiped out of dust and, and that's it. We also mentioned a little bit earlier 
the um, evacuation procedures and um, how these are very important for, for hotel application. And um, here we have, um, of course, the option to integrate with all the systems on the market, but especially with um, with the Bosch um, public address and voice evacuation system, we have a data connection that we can use called Smart Safety Link, which basically it's um, one IP patch connection uh, between the uh, fire panel and the controller of the of the voice evacuation system. Um, and that's all that we need. And no matter how many, um, for example, zones we need or messages, um, it's still just one patch uh, cable connection. And this basically gives us the flexibility to do the programming exactly what we uh, in the way we want. So uh, even if we expand further, we still will not need to do additional cabling for the system, right? So we, we just need to add the new zones or the new messages, adapt the, the programming, and that's it. Right. Of course, um, if it's not the case that there is a um, um, system that supports smart shift link, there's also the option of having a classical integration between the um, fire alarm systems and the um, voice evacuation system. Next on, uh, talking about the additional services that um, uh, we can provide here. Um, okay, of course, the challenge is that the, the uh, works, the maintenance works, or the new configuration that we have to do in the fire alarm system are a disturbing factor to the guests and, and to all the uh, functionality of the location. So for that, we offer our remote services, our platform that allows Remote, remote maintenance for the file and systems. And of course, this reduced, uh, reduces a lot the disturbance um, to the guests and staff of the um, location, right? So we have a, um, some components to our remote services, like for example, remote maintenance, um, Allow us to allow us to to prepare when going to the maintenance of the system as technicians to know exactly what needs to be done, what is the status of each detector without even visiting the site. Right, so we just connect, we see the list of the issues in the system. We we can even have a predictive maintenance based on the. Uh, data that is collected in the uh, remote platform. And this basically allow us to have a minimum to no downtime and always go prepared in the site for the, for the maintenance to minimize the time we are spending there. So speaking about the modularity of the system, um, of course, this is addressing a challenge that we often need to expand our system due to rework, repurpose of the space, or um, just growing up in, in the space that it's used by the uh, hotel or the, or the site. So for that, um, I think Bosch is a perfect product because everything starting with the panel itself to, of course, the system, um, system-wise, it's modular and it can be just added over time to extend the functionality of the system and the capacity of the system, right? So basically we can start um, with a small panel, we can add uh, modules inside, we can, um, if we don't have space anymore for the panel, we can just add another casing near our panel and just add more uh, panel modules, more loops, more uh, peripherals, uh, field uh, equipment, and so on. So this is um, very easy to, to do, and um, this is really what, what a scalable system means, and uh, we can grow up up to uh, 32 panels in a network by, by 32 loops um, every panel. So, But we will just talk about this um, capacity in a second. Right, so uh, bearing that in mind, um, the final topic I wanted to address here is about integration and interaction with other systems. And here, um, with the Bosch Avenir panel, we have a wide variety of possibilities to, to integrate. Um, 
be it, for example, data protocols that we integrate with or just um, uh, different type of interfaces with different type of connections. And um, speaking about data protocols, we, we um, let's say nat natively offer our um, own data protocol that you can use. Uh, it even comes with a, um, a software development kit for anyone who wants to write integration. Um, but we also offer the standard open uh, interface OPC, and this in, can be used uh, out of the box without any any developing, right? And then from that interface, we are um, able to translate with gateways to different other type of um, protocols like BACnet, Modbus, Long, KNX, whatever is needed in the project. So that there's no uh, really limitation uh, what you can use. Um, but of course, if we don't talk about uh, data communication, if it's about an analog exchange, then um, everything is also possible because um, we offer a wide variety of interfaces um, with inputs, um, with um, relay outputs, with voltage monitor outputs and so on that basically can control or monitor any type of system it's needed. And here we have just some examples, like for example, uh, extinguishing systems, we have a dedicated interface for that, um, elevator controllers, um, door access controllers, smoke management systems, um, um, gas or fuel valves, we can control directly, of course, if it's also if it's allowed by the local regulation, that's also an important factor. Um, Kitchen appliances, main electricity, um, air conditioning and ventilation, everything can be um, integrated. So this is uh, just some examples, right? Um, of course, I mentioned earlier also public address and voice evacuation. If it's not the Bosch system, then it can also be um, interconnected via interfaces. Good. So looking at all these use cases and uh, particularities of the um, projects in, in the lodging vertical in hotels, um, we summarized the main uh, benefits of why um, Bosch is a fitting system for this type of projects. And we have here, of course, we, we talked about there's a reliable and proven quality uh, system with a broad portfolio, um, certified products, and um, yeah, this is, uh, let's say, the main step towards protecting lives and assets in, in a hotel project. Um, we have very early fire and smoke detection. That's crucial, of course. Speed here is crucial to um, be able to evacuate in a real fire um, scenario all the persons that are occupying such a location. We have a modular system that allows you to pay for what you need and expand whenever you need. And finally, we offer additional services on top of the basic um, core fire alarm system that is required, uh, let's say, according to the norms or according to um, the specification, we can always put on top additional services like uh, remote, uh, remote services. Good, so we talked a little bit about the particularities of the um, hotel projects. We talked a little bit about the um, use cases, the benefits you have, and now um, I would like to discuss a little bit about the uh, system itself and some of our products. We will not go through all of them because uh, the time is rather limited, so I will just focus on some core products from our offering. And um, here you see, let's say, a blueprint, a diagram of a, of a system. Um, it's not a typical system because it's just one uh, equipment from all the types we can offer, but it's just to see how they are connected and how they are working together. So at the core, we have, of course, the um, panel, um, control panel for our system. And it provides um, loop for, loops for um, addressable, inter addressable peripherals that you can see here, like for example, the um, 
detectors and uh, these are how the Avenar 4000 detectors are looking like or the invisible detectors. Um, we have, of course, signaling devices like sounders or um, flashes with sounders. Um, we have special detectors like the aspiration, addressable aspiration systems here or wireless gateways for wireless detectors. But we also have all these type of interfaces that can allow other equipment to be connected like conventional uh, detectors or special detectors like the uh, linear uh, smoke detectors. Um, all kind of uh, panels like for the fire brigade or for uh, mimic panels that we want to um, construct and, and display information about our systems. So all these are addressable interfaces connected to the panel uh, via these um, LSNI loops, we call them. Um, but we also have, um, let's say, other equipment that can be connected to directly to the panel through the panel modules like for example uh, first of all the remote keypad it's it's a network device so it can be networked with the panel itself we can have a connection to a gateway for remote services as we mentioned them earlier um, dialer that can be connected to a fire brigade um, um, annunciator and uh, of course, we mentioned also the smart safety link to uh, the public address and voice evacuation system. Here, actually, it's it's a straight connection IP patch from one Ethernet port in the controller to uh, another Ethernet port in the controller. So the bubble itself is no equipment. It's just to mention that this is smart safety link connection. We can have a printer, of course or a connection, a data connection to a, a management system, alarm server, whatever it's needed for the project. Yeah, we mentioned already the protocols um, like OPC, but other protocols, protocols as well. What we offer on top is, um, let's say a few gems or um, uh, unique products or services that we can offer, for example, Aviotech, it's our video-based fire detection system. It's um, basically a um, video camera that can recognize flame and smoke um, at the source in the, with the help of, um, let's say, AI, um, deep learning neural networks. And, and this can be, of course, also integrated with a classical fire alarm system. Um, and Bosch was the pioneer of, of this technology. Then we have the software package for programming the system, which always comes uh, free of charge for um, our partners. So there's no limitation, no um, dangle protection or um, anything else. It's, it's a free open software that you can uh, download and use to, to program and, uh, of course, maintain the systems. And um, in the same manner, we also offer a free um, to use, download and use uh, planning software, our uh, safety system designer, which is uh, quite an amazing product. It allows you to, to design your system in, in the early stages. Um, even starting, for example, from an um, uh, Excel table, uh, bill of materials, just import it and you have everything designed for you. Or uh, reading AutoCAD plans and, and reading how many detectors on which loop and what panel and so on and building the system together and then generate the bill of materials. Also generating the tender text and anything that you um, imagine that it would be needed for the documentation of the project. Like for example, battery calculations, everything. So this is, um, I invite you to take a look at it. It's if you just um, go online and search for Bosch Safety System Designer or SSD, you will land on the downloading page and you can just try it whenever you want. Right, so um, as I said, I want to focus a little bit on some of the core products. I will not go to all of them here, but I will start with the panel, with uh, our Avenal control panel. And here we have two models, Avenal 8000 and Avenal 2000. 
Um, I will start with a smaller one, Avenar 2000. It's, it's a panel that comes normally with one loop, but it's extendable to four loops. And this is the maximum um, amount of loops that you can have in this panel. It's a very compact product. Otherwise, besides the limitation in capacity, it has the same features, look, feel, and options as the other panel, the bigger panel, that is just, uh, let's say, um, limited in capacity. Also, um, it comes in two uh, flavors, standard and premium controller. Um, the um, premium controller also allows networking. So it can be networked with the um, Avenar 8000, for example. The other uh, panel, Avenar 8000, it's a high capacity panel. Um, it can be, um, let's say, configured with up to 32 uh, loops, we see. Um, so quite a big project and of course networkable also in two flavors, standard the premium premium offering on top the data integrations um, options. And, um, but both uh, standard and premium can be networked. So that's um, coming as a standard for all uh, type of controls. Both of them are really, really uh, flexible panels in the sense that everything is modular. We have um, module racks where we can place all modules as we need them. Um, they are addressing all type of um, project sizes because of that and also uh, about the flexibility and scalability of the projects. We talked a little bit about that. They are also coming with a very fast processor in the controller with the option of redundancy as well, not only on the controller level, but also on the, uh, for example, power supply level or the loop model level and, and so on. So we don't offer only what is required by the regulation, but we also offer um, extra safety options. And um, 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 it, it, like I said, it offers the option for integration with the external system, with, with um, other um, management systems, alarm servers, everything. So that's very easy to do because every controller comes with a four uh, port Ethernet switch embedded. So you don't need extra networking uh, devices or switches or anything. So basically you can um, use, for example, two Ethernet ports for the networking and the other two Internet ports for whatever integrations is needed to, to do. So it comes as a standard with all these um, network ports. And um, another very important aspect is the operating for this panel. It comes with a um, seven inch color touchscreen. Uh, everything is clear, uh, everything is easy to operate. You have extensive menus uh, with clear text, um, adaptable in multiple languages, of course. And um, on the left side, as you see here, there's an icon area uh, with, with no text. So everything is just represented with uh, language neutral LEDs that are showing the status of the system, right? Um, there are no, uh, there are no uh, let's say, text inscription on the panel. Everything is displayed on the on the uh, full color touchscreen here. So all the text is basically adaptable in in the languages that you need. So this is let's say a summary about the Avenar panel. There's a lot to talk about here, but unfortunately the time is is quite limited. So uh, please make sure to put your questions in the in the chat if if you want to find specific uh, information about it. Moving next on to the Avenar detector um, series 4000. So uh, this is basically not one product but multiple products because it's a series of detectors that comes with a variety of sensors. Um, it's available with one or two. Um, optical LEDs in the in the chamber, and this gives the uh, robustness to uh, not be that uh, vulnerable to false alarms from uh, different particles like steam, um, cigarette smoke, or other I don't know particles that should not uh, trigger an alarm. Right? 
also it comes with a um, very robust and and um, um, uh, let's say developed over time uh, the, this intelligent signal processing feature it's basically a collection of algorithms that are uh, looking at the patterns received from the sensors and decide really fast and accurate if this is a fire scenario or not right so this isp also it's it's a uh, part of the uh, filtering of false alarms and also um, providing a fast reaction to real fire scenarios. More on top, we have, um, which is not mentioned here, we have the function of ISMO, which basically monitors the electromagnetic disturbances. It's, um, it's quite a unique feature for Bosch detectors. Um, so if you have, for example, a high magnetic electromagnetic field that can cause false alarms, um, you see that the detector has this um, behavior pattern with no real causes. You can just check what are the um, values of these electromagnetic fields and, and look at the possible causes. Like, for example, there was a new lamp that was mounted in the area or a motor or a high, um, um, let's say, power electronic equipment that can cause that. So then you can, uh, of course, decide um, either to move that equipment or to replace the detector in a safer environment. And all these uh, three aspects are contributing to have very robust but also fast detector. And also this um, device um, is monitored to, um, with the help of the cloud solution that we have, remote services. Um, all the um, condition factors and analog values can be, um, <clears throat> let's say, monitored, and then we can have a, a analysis on the data that is transmitted to the cloud. And finally, one very important aspect, um, most of these detectors can be automatically or manual address. So that means the physical address on the loop can be decided automatically by the panel when, when uh, the system is commissioned, or you can set it manually with, with the rotary switches. Um, and this gives a great flexibility depending on, for example, if you have ex um, existing cabling there that um, where you have T branches and you want to keep it, uh, you can still use these uh, manual addressing um, um, detectors. So basically, uh, it's your choice how you want it. Um, of course, the new projects usually use automatic addressing because it's it's very easy for the technicians, but for special cases, we have the option to uh, use manual addressing as well. Right, and next on, I want to talk just a little bit uh, about the 520 series uh, of the detectors. And this is what we call the uh, invisible detector. It's a detector that has a virtual optical chamber. It doesn't have a physical optical chamber. It's mounted, um, flash mounted on the ceiling, as you see here. And at the surface, you only see the face of the detector. Um, here you have the LEDs and the receptor, light receptors and everything. So basically, there's no physical optical chamber here. The um, impact to the uh, design is minimum, of course. And uh, all these accessories are available in, in different colors, as you see here. So it's easy to personalize and easy to adapt to the design that is required for this uh, to any project, right? And I said uh, earlier, very important, very easy to maintain. Basically, you just wipe the surface clean and that is, that is it. The final product I want to talk about is the Avena All-in-One 4000. It's a um, signaling device with a sounder and a flash incorporated and also can be used as a mounting point as a base for the detector. That's why I call All-in-One because you can have the sounder, the flash and the detector mounted in the same point. Um, it complies with NIM5423, which is very important for the um, European space, for example, um, and for uh, the mixed markets as well. And um, what's very important about it is that it can um, 
it, it will not consume too much power. So basically you can have a high capacity of devices connected to the loop. So just for example, if you, if you would only put this device on a loop, you can add 125 devices on this. And the limitation is not the current, it's the addresses. Yeah, because we can connect 250 um, devices on a loop normally and every all in one for thousand um, consumes two addresses, one for the sound and one for the flesh. That this is the limitation. You can still do one kilometer of cable with 0 0.8 millimeter cable um, easily with 125 devices. So I think that's really amazing and it really opens the opportunity, um, especially for the hotels where it's important to have, um, uh, let's say, a regulated um, sound level even at the bed level in every guest room. So I think that's very important uh, to have this easy management of the signaling devices. Right, so um, those are the, let's say, um, equipments we selected as being um, of uh, big importance. Of course, there are others and um, we don't have the time to go through all of them, but if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. But before finishing, I want to also go through um, some of uh, our references in, in the hotel vertical and um, I will start with this very nice um, complex in Bursa, Turkey. Um, this is a luxury hotel um, where with multiple restaurants, bars. It's, it's actually a complex, it's not just one hotel. Uh, conference room lounges, uh, wellness facilities, spa and so on, fitness studio. I think there are a lot, a lot of facilities there. Um, they're together a five-star hotel um, and um, yeah, and nearby three-star Hampton Hotel also included. Um, and this was, um, our solution for this was the uh, modular big panel installed here together with the invisible detector because the architecture requirements were quite high for this. Um, but also, um, Bosch also supplied the video surveillance system, 250 cameras, they were installed there. And on top, the, um, the building integration system, our PIS system that uh, integrates everything together. Um, fire detection, video surveillance, and also the uh, voice evacuation system. So all in all, quite a complex um, system um, that it's integrated together. And next on, um, I will just hurry up a little bit because uh, I think closing to the final time. Uh, this uh, Van der Waalk um, Hotel in, in Netherlands, um, it's a very, very old chain of hotels where they cross the Netherlands. It's family owned business. And here it's, it's quite, a, again, quite a unique architectural design. Um, it was um, the Avenar panel here connected with the Avenar detectors. Um, but also here there was a lot um, of consideration about the heat and, and, and heat spikes in the kitchens, for example. And this was um, yeah, quite a challenge technically to accommodate the needs, but it was very successfully done with Bosch and also with a public address connected via the smart safety link features that, that we have. This is one of the official references that we have. We have a dedicated page to this on uh, boschsecurity.com. So feel free to look it up and uh, find some more details. One of the uh, very interesting projects and, and actually quite a uh, huge complex of accommodation facilities, one and only um, in uh, Porto Novi in Montenegro. Um, this is um, basically a campus of buildings. Um, this was um, a system that we installed 39 fire alarm panels. Um, a big um, model <clears throat> with more than 10,000 detectors connected to it. Also, we used aviotech cameras here for fast detection of in critical areas, uh, voice evacuation system integrated to the fire, 
um, video surveillance and, and other um, Bosch products that were all integrated in BIS in our integration platform. So a huge project and, and uh, really um, nice integration of different type of uh, pro um, portfolio components. And finally, and this is the last uh, reference that I'm talking about, um, this um, Hilton Hotel in, in Kazakhstan, in Astana, that's also um, very um, nice reference for us. It, it has more than 3,000 smoke detectors connected to the Avenar panels, um, also with, with uh, 300 loud, Bosch loudspeakers connected to the uh, public address and voice evacuation system. Of course, they are integrated together uh, for working together and um, yeah, um, the, here it was, um, let's say the challenge is that Hilton has its the own set of rules for all their hotels worldwide. So um, we already know how to deal with it uh, because it's not the first Hilton hotel we, we are doing, but still it's um, clearly that we can adapt to all kinds of requirement sets. And also here we had quite a lot of conference rooms and, and uh, dedicated conference systems that we also manufacture. So all in all, uh, this is just a taste of what uh, um, type of projects already are using Bosch products. And um, this also concludes my uh, presentation for today. I think we are good on time. Um, let's hope we have also some time for some questions, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for the presentation, Florin. So let me read a few of the questions that we received. So yeah. first is, um, is your fire alarm system BMS ready or do we need to buy additional gateway? So, um, thank you for the question. Very good question. Um, I started scratching the surface on this topic in the presentation as well. Um, we are ready to integrate with any type of BMS system, but of course, what you need is depending on the protocol that the BMS is using. So, for example, if you need an OPC integration, which is an open protocol, you don't need absolutely nothing, right? So, is it just connect to the switch that the controller is providing and to your BMS system, and there's an IP connection ready to use. If you um, use standard, other standard interfaces like BACnet, LON, KNX, you would need a gateway to translate OPC to that protocol. And this you can find anywhere on the market, of course. Um, if you need something special, you can even do that, right? You, you, you can do your own integration with our SDK um, to connect straight with, a, let's say, non-standard protocol to uh, our panel. So everything is possible. So thank you. So let me go to the next question. Are servers for cloud applications used in Avenar system located in EU? Um, yes, exactly. The servers are located in the European Union. Okay. But also it's worth mentioning that the connection between the gateway that it's in our network, in the local network, sorry, in the in the location to the server, it's a secure connection that is digitally encrypted um, and basically will not provide the security risk for the location. So that's very important. Yes, that's great. Okay, another question is, um, what is the sound level of your audible and visible bass? So, if you mean the all-in-one, I hope this is. Uh, I the, think it's the, the all-in-one. Yes. Right. Okay. So, um, all these uh, in European norms in EN uh, fifty-four, these are highly regulated. So, for example, for the vi uh, visual intensity of the light. Um, the tests are done for a specific coverage, and this is specified in the certificate of the product. You have the distances of the area that is covered by um, that uh, beacon in particular, right? So we, uh, I know that, for example, in NFPA, there's a requirement about the um, uh, light intensity, but in EN norms, that is different, right? We specified what it was tested for the for a certain surface. And then you know how, how to design the system based on, on that coverage of the product. So it's 
not very easily to have uh, an answer for that technically because first of all the intensity the light intensity is fluctuating depending on how uh, the beacon is triggered and also the sound level it's um var it's variable with the tonality we offer 32 tones for for that um, sounder so basically you have to check which is the tone that i use and then see in the data sheet what is the sound pressure that is corresponding to that tone right so basically what what you uh, um, have to do is please either if you use our safety system designer just click the link on the product and you immediately go to the data sheet right or just go to our online catalog and find the data sheet for the all-in-one 4000 and select which type of tonality because unfortunately i'm not familiar with the local regulation which tonality is required in which territory and then you will find out which is the um, sound pressure it really varies a lot so i will not venture now to give you a number right I hope that answers the question. Yes. Yeah, so, um, okay, I'm going to read the last question that I'm seeing here. Awesome. So, if yes, uh, if our attendees still have more questions, uh, please uh, feel free to type in your questions before we end the webinar. So, my last question here is: As per NFPA standard, spacing of smoke detectors is by performance based. Is this also applicable for EN standards and norms? Right. Um, in um, EN world, um, it's also not a very, let's say, harmonized space. So even in European Union, if you go from country to country, the rules might differ. That's one topic we, ha we have to consider. Um, the governing norm is uh, EN 5414. Uh, well, it's a technical specification is TS 5414. And it specifies the range, the radius that it's covered by a smoke detector or a heat detector, for example. And um, based on that, of course, we calculated the square that it's inside that circle. Um, but this also is different um, with the inclination of the roof, with the height of the roof, and so on. So there are a few aspects that are um, let's say um, changing the the placement of the detectors and the spacing of the detectors but the governing norm it's about the radius of the area that it protects uh, it's not necessarily performance based and i'm talking now about the point smoke detectors because they're also the linear space detectors which are a different story right but if we're talking about point detectors this is the governing um, let's say rule, it's the radius of um, the coverage, not anything else uh, regarding the performance. Then what you do with the performance wise, if you have uh, dual detectors or, or ionization, even if they are very, very old and not used anymore, this is, this is not a criteria that um, influences how the detectors are spaced out. So just the radius that uh, gives the coverage. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I, I'm not a very, let's say, um, huge specialist in NFPA because obviously in Europe um, it's not applying, uh, but I'm aware of NFPA and uh, yeah, uh, that's, um, it would be interesting if we can have a comment about what this performance based uh, means in NFPA. I'm, I'm very curious about it. It's just, uh, <laughs> if it's possible, right? <laughs> Yes. Okay. So before we end the webinar, because I don't see any more questions, um, we would like to ask um, our audience um, to give us feedback. So you see a QR code on the screen and uh, we request you to answer the survey. So we will greatly appreciate your response for this survey. And maybe um, uh, worth mm -hmm. mentioning, if you have any questions or feedback later, do not hesitate to contact ourselves, right? Uh, myself, directly to Vina, or our um, mm -hmm. local contact, it's always uh, an option. Just uh, um, reach out to us and we are more than happy to answer questions also later, not, not just now. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. Maybe it's time to end the webinar. So Florine, thank you for your time. 
Thank you very much also for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, yes, I wish yes, everybody and... a nice afternoon. And uh, yeah, yes. uh, very good. Thanks, everyone.